Hey guys, welcome to the ninth lesson of Learning Vue.js. I'm experimenting with, with a different camera angle right now. Um, before I was previously to the side, but right now I'm kind of directly pointed at the camera <laughs> as we speak. Um, I would love your feedback, whether or not you prefer this angle or the previous, but let's move forward to the next lesson. In the previous lesson, we focused on learning about making post requests. And in this lesson, we want to focus on learning about watchers. So what are watchers? Watchers are a generic way to observe and react to data changes on a view instance, when you have some data that needs to change based on some other data. It should be used cautiously, and in most cases you want to use the computed method, but in certain instances when you're performing asynchronous or expensive operations in response to changing data, then watchers might be a good example to use. For our next lesson, we're going to be piggybacking off of our previous lesson, where we focused on making GET and POST requests. And we're going to be kind of modifying the input a little bit where we could give the user some feedback if the letters that they do type is greater than five characters. As you can see in the first picture, since it's less than five characters, there's no actual indicator letting the user know that it's ready to go. When it's uh, five characters or more, this has a space to it, then it says you're ready to go. Let's look, let's look at a GIF example. So as the user types, and then it gets closer to five characters, it gives you that feedback. And then as it disappears, it gives you no feedback. All right, let's uh, start on this and uh, see where we can go from here. Like our previous examples, we were using variable names like submitting and loading to indicate to the user some kind of feedback when they were fetching or posting a request. Similarly, we want to add another variable called something like valid name to let the user know that if the name that they entered is valid then show this text so let's do something similar like the two statements above we'll add the p tag and then we'll add an if tag in front and then we'll create another variable name called valid name which we haven't actually defined in the view instance yet but if valid name is true then you're good to go let's go back to our view instance in the app.js and add another variable key above above or below <laughs> let's add a new variable key below so valid name false and just like before we're gonna be adding a, another key to this instance but instead of in the methods act uh, instead of in the methods we're gonna be calling a new um, key value called watch and in our watch is where we're gonna be watching for a specific variable type and similarly to two-way data binding uh, we actually want to be watching for the new user information and basically it's saying watch for this specific variable and if this variable is less than five characters then don't show anything and if it's greater than five characters then do show something so we could call something like new user and the new user can point to a function which has two arguments in this, this specific function the two arguments will be the new value and then the old value in this case, we're more interested in the new value and not really the old value. So we can actually kind of remove this information. But I was just kind of showing you that it does exist if you ever need to use it. And in in the function call itself, we're going to do the check between the greater and less than characters. So what we're going to do is if new value is greater, new value dot length is greater than five, then we're going to be setting the this dot valid name to true. Else, if new value dot length is less than five or less than or equal to five, then we're going to set this dot valid name equals false. So in other words, if the length character of the new value is greater than five, then we want to show that text that we shown before where it says good to go. And if it's less than five characters, less than or equal to five characters, then we want to set it to false and then it'll just disappear. Let's look at the browser and see if it actually implemented those changes. So right here, I'll type in Alex and then space Lee. There you go. It's good to go. And as I erase the characters, you can see that it's basically removing the content from the page. And then just like before, we're going to be fetching the users and more or less everything else is the same. Cool. To recap, watchers are a generic way to observe and react to data changes on a view instance. Generally, you want to use it when you're performing some asynchronous call or expensive operation. 
in response to changing data. What I like to per what I like to use watches for is when I'm kind of watching, quote unquote, watching for a specific data instance that this watcher is relying on. So in the case of our example, we were watching for the new user variable. And we were saying that if the new user variable was greater than five characters, then we want to show some kind of text. I would use this cautiously, like I said before, and in general, we want to probably lean towards using methods or computed, but there is a use case for watchers. I hope you enjoyed these lessons learning about watchers and I would love your feedback regarding the new camera angle, uh, something I'm experimenting with and if you really prefer the side angle then we could move it back that way. I hope these nine lessons have really been helpful for you as it is to me and I would love to keep moving on and learning more about Vue.js with you guys. Uh, if you have any questions please let me know in the comments below and uh, let's move on to the next lesson. See you then.